How's it going guys? My name is Tavares and today I bought the worst Toyota MR2 in the country. This is gonna be fun. So let's start off with a little bit of a history lesson. This is a 1991 Toyota MR2. And in the late 80s and early 90s, a lot of car manufacturers were uh, learning from their mistakes in the 80s, uh, the power crazed 80s, and the very stringent regulations of the 70s. That sort of outside the box thinking led car manufacturers like Toyota and other big names uh, to really give new platforms a go. So this is a mid rear engine platform and that's what the MR stands for. The engine is behind the driver and that means that the weight distribution of this car is on point. Actually the weight distribution is a little bit biased towards the rear which makes this car a little bit happy in the bends. But this platform was popularized by the likes of uh, Ferrari and Lamborghini and supercars but never really put in a production attainable affordable sports car until the MR2 came along. Now I know that Pontiac had the Fiero and the Fiero was a success in its own right, but it never really achieved the cult status that this car did, especially because Fiero was a car for a person that looked at a Ferrari and said, I can make that. And an MR2 was actually thought of as a poor man's Ferrari in terms of the handling and power and uh, the overall look, while the Fiero was just kind of a starting point for a kit car. You even had companies like Honda getting into the mix with their NSX and the NSX is uh, basically a bigger version of this car with a bigger naturally aspirated engine uh, and it produced a little bit more power, but it had the same basic driving dynamic. And uh, those cars are, kind of going stratospheric with their prices in the used car market. But these cars are relatively cheap, uh, mainly because they made too many of them. Not too many in terms of Toyota, that's not a Corolla. But they did make around 20,000 for the US market. That includes the naturally aspirated and the turbo versions for the second generation like this one is. An NSX, they only made 9,000 of those. And uh, let's say a Toyota Supra, which is made by Toyota, they only made 11,000 of those. So those are basically twice as rare as this. But I think that this is one of the best sports car values you can buy in the used car market today because if you get a really good, like the best MR2 turbo in the world, then you'd be looking at around ten to fifteen thousand dollars. But I didn't have ten or fifteen thousand dollars to spend, but I still wanted an MR2 Turbo. So what I did is I bought one for a thousand dollars, and I didn't really care about anything else. And here's what that's like. Now the eagle-eyed amongst you will notice that this is not actually a turbo model. So uh, the turbo model usually comes with a different front grille. There's like holes here for uh, fog lights and the rear wing seems to be missing. The turbo models usually have a rear wing, a three piece that uh, bolts onto the trunk and also the side panels, but there's nothing on this car. But oddly enough, there are holes in this trunk panel right here, and uh, there are holes down the side that have been filled in really, really poorly. So that means that this car, unfortunately, is not a turbo model. Except for the fact that this actually has the turbo engine. This is a 3S GTE, the second gen model of the 3S GTE. This is a two liter four cylinder with a turbocharger making round about 200 horsepower and the same amount of torque. Now, this drivetrain is exactly what makes this car so unique. And uh, this was actually a powerhouse of an engine because although in stock form, it could handle 200, maybe 250 horsepower in different iterations, when you boost this thing, this can make a serious amount of power. And in a light car like this, especially with all the weight over the rear wheels, that made this car seriously quick. Just to give you guys an idea of how quick exactly this car can be, Later models, the 94 and 95 models with the Gen 3 3S GTE, which basically had a revised intake manifold and uh, some updated turbo components, but had the same basic architecture. It made this car do the quarter mile in 13.1 seconds. Now, just for comparison's sake, that's round about the same as what Car and Driver did with my Mercedes SL55 AMG, and that had around 500 horsepower. So power to weight ratio is the name of the game here. Although this car was actually quite small and uh, diminutive in stature, it was faster than the Supra Turbo, it was faster than the Acura NSX, 
and it was also faster than the Ferrari 348 TS. So when people say this is a poor man's Ferrari, they really do mean it because it was actually faster than a Ferrari in its day. Now I know you're probably thinking that, yeah, I'm talking about later model examples being faster than a Ferrari, but how good is this car? How good is the car that I just bought for a thousand dollars, basically sign unseen from a kid on Craigslist? Well, here's the clip of when I first laid eyes on this car and um, I wasn't exactly impressed. And <laughs> there she is. Mm. Right, let's take a look. So that is some extra bonus parts, uh, stock turbo and a uh, wastegate. For the AC, I was told. Okay. But the AC belt is inside the trunk. Okay. Oh, and there's a spoiler. It looks like a uh, looks like a stock spoiler, but do you have the sides? I think that there's like two extra pieces. Yeah, that's what. I don't got the sides. I mean. Yeah, it looks like it. If we open the trunk, I feel like there's parts there. Right? Okay, cool. So, do you know what color originally this car was? Because some of it is some of it's red, yeah, like you can see red. over here, inside but door, like but inside blue. the door it's blue. So, but that doesn't definitely doesn't look like OEM yeah. paint. So we have yes. this. Uh, that's not. Okay. And the switch is right here. Okay, so there's a manual switch for the fans. <laughs> so this definitely looks like a swap, um, but this is a second gen uh, 3S GTE. Turbo looks a little bigger. Uh, so you said that, that was from a Supra? Yeah, the 7M. And then they said they're like almost like the same. Yeah, yeah, they, they're, they have different, uh, different hot sides, but. The CT26 Turbo, but uh, does have a catch can here, uh, some some other stuff. I mean, all of this is pretty much homemade, you know, wiring, and it's going to need it going through. But starts up fine. Another uh, another reason you can tell that it's not the it wasn't an original turbo is the turbos have this thing in the middle right here. Uh, they have um, like a, a bigger uh, so like a more pronounced hump uh, and also the front bumper, but these it's really really common that these are swaps like dynamite here. <laughs> I feel like there's a lot of different ideas going going on in this car like the wheels the the, the engine all that stuff I mean, it, it's a it's it's rough, but it's a project. So that's that's fine All right Let's get it on the truck. Well, that was uh, quite an ordeal just because it is a million degrees here in uh, Miami. But it's on the trailer and uh, it didn't scrape anything. And the car actually does run. It's not uh, its not as bad as I thought, uh, but it's also much worse than I thought uh, just because of the bodywork and whatnot. But I think bodywork can be fixed and uh, the running and uh, it is overheating a little bit, but uh, we can fix that as well. But now I have a 180 mile trip ahead of me and should be fun. I can't wait to get this thing home. Now the car by modern standards is actually pretty Spartan, but it does run. That 3S GT does come to life, even though uh, it does have a few issues. So let's, let's hear what it sounds like. Key's a little sticky. Okay, so it's not actually the best running car in the world, but it does have a lot of the MR2's original charm. Stuff like these awesome pop-up headlights. And these pretty cool manual roll-up windows. Now this is, I always love the... Now all kidding aside, one thing that works really, really well in this car is the T-top roof or T-bar as uh, Toyota calls it. Now, I do have the T-tops, they're in my garage, they're uh, glass, which is cool, I always love glass roofs, but this little thing, this little spring uh, wing deflector is just one of the things that uh, lets you know that Toyota was really on their game. So, this little thing would make sure that wind didn't shear right into your hair uh, as you had the tops off. So, uh, this is actually pretty cool, it's on, it's on both sides. You would see stuff like this on a sunroof, but uh, on a car like this, I don't even think the Fiero has this, but uh, this is a little cool addition. Another thing is this aftermarket fiberglass snorkel. Now, uh, it's not actually in the best shape, it's not actually the best quality, and it's not really 
held on together by uh, by that much but it does provide some extra cooling to the engine bay and uh, I kind of like the look of it. I don't know, I'm a little ambivalent because it does have that sort of um, confused dog look. It also doesn't really help that if you open up the hood or engine compartment, you see that this doesn't really lead to anywhere. There's actually a little uh, little ledge right here that cuts the air. And although the intake is right here, I doubt this is really doing much, but it does look kind of cool. Now, usually this is the point of the video where I take this car on a test drive and start talking about things that I have no authority in telling you, stuff like snap over steer and understeer and uh, on center uh, twitchiness and stuff like that, stuff I have no idea what they mean, but uh, they sound cool on video. The reason I'm not doing that is because this car, as you can see, is a little rough and it's actually not safe to drive. And that's actually the point of this project, not that it's unsafe to drive, but the fact that I want to make it safe to drive. I want this car to be a very, very good driver. I want it to be an autocross car and I want it to be a very cheap, bare bones platform for me to learn how to do advanced techniques like heel toe downshifting and uh, stuff like that. And I wanna make sure that gets done on a very, very small budget because after all, this car was $1,000. I don't wanna put a bunch of money into it. It's never gonna be a show car. It does have 200 some odd thousand miles on it, but uh, I think it can make it and I think that uh, I can make it into something that's solid and reliable and at least more than, uh, than what we have here today. So that's gonna be the focus of this build. Now I'm not getting rid of any other builds. I'm not putting any other builds on hold. This is gonna be in addition to what we usually see as far as my SL, my Aston, and my Ultimate Daily Driver, which is back there, which is getting some mods on it as well. This should be a lot of fun and I hope you guys enjoy it. But uh, in the next video, I'm gonna be doing an in-depth look into this car as far as everything wrong with it and there is a lot wrong with this car. If you like this video, and I hope you do, consider subscribing, hit that subscribe button, and hit that button next to the subscribe button. It's a little bell, and that is a notification button. And that makes you part of my notification squad. And that gives you access, early access, to all my videos. And uh, you'll get a notification as soon as those videos come out. If you'd like to support my channel, and I hope you do that, you can buy one of these shirts. I have these shirts, I have Wrench Everyday shirts, and I have some uh, stickers and other products that you guys might like. Every single dollar will go towards these builds and uh, not just this one, but uh, my Mercedes, Aston, SL. All those things need a lot of love and I hope you guys like what, uh, what I'm selling. If you'd like to contact me for any reason, just ask me any questions at all. Actually, I will be doing a, uh, a Q&A video at the end of the week, but uh, if you want something a little more post haste, then you can reach me at The Real Tavarish. Uh, that is Instagram and Twitter, Ask Tavarish on Facebook, and uh, also AskTavarish at gmail.com is my email. So uh, I'm easy to reach and I'm easy to find. Until next time, on cars like this that uh, Man, every single inch of this car needs work, so uh, I guess I need to wrench every day. <laughs>